We have been discussing an amazing book, Jason Miller Protection and Reversal Magic. We have learned through these videos, uh, recognizing our attacks and recognizing the source of those attacks. We have learned daily practices for us to keep safe. We also have learned some protection magic and protection for home and protection for ourselves, for our person. We also learn how to find out the person that is cursing you. Last but not least, we did an exorcism video. And today I'm going to be talking about spirits. Today is the spirit guardian's turn. Also, the spirits that we create with our thoughts. Some call them servitors, some others call them topaz, some other people call them egregores, you name it. Now, before I go ahead and we start the video that is coming up now, there is something I really want to make sure that you guys know and you guys are very aware. If you decide to deal with spirits, be aware that you are opening yourself up to relationships of another realm. Knowledge and wisdom along strong mind and thought control is needed. Having said that, let's get into spirits. Hi, which is Blizzard B. This is White Raven over here. And today I have a super interesting topic and video for you guys based on the series that we're doing, What to Do When You Are Cursed. And this is also discussing the amazing book from Jason Miller, Protection and Reversal Magic, which I suggest that you really are, if you really are interested in this topic, please get the book. We are discussing some of the topics and some of the um, articles that he has in this book. We're not really going into deep into this book. The idea is for you to get this book and study it if this is something that really interests you. Now, we are talking today about spirits. And the same way that spirits are sent to do harm, they are also here to protect us. But now, what are spirits? What are spirit guardians? What are we talking about? So different systems and different religions have different spirit guardians. So some of them are going to be demons, for example. Some other ones are going to be angels. Some, some other are going to be saints, like in the Catholic Church. Some others are going to be Orishas and the Loa, like in Santeria, Voodoo. Okay, so you're also going to have the Fey and the She. And you're also going to have the gin. Depending on what system you are following, if you are following any system, um, you are going to choose your deities. Now, if you're going to use a traditional spirit for a, a very well established spiritual path, spiritual system, please make sure that you follow all the protocols behind the use of these spirits. Please don't be mixing spirits that maybe, just maybe, in this system, in this religion, they don't get along because you're going to have then a bigger problem, my friend. Something really important that you need to know. Remember that just because you're calling on a spirit and you decide to use their service, that doesn't mean the spirit is going to be working very happy for you. So just please make sure that you follow protocols, okay? So which ways uh, you can actually invoke a spirit? How do you invoke a spirit? Well, again, depending on what type of spirits are you working with, you're going to do mantras, right? Uh, if you're following voodoo, you do vivis right? So which are, you can do sigils. Uh, it depends what type of um, spirit you are calling upon. You can also do offerings like, I refer to my country because, you know, I can, I speak for myself. Uh, in Puerto Rico, you have a lot of people, and I'm pretty sure in a lot of uh, Spanish countries, you have people that they do promise. So they will talk to one of the saints and they will say, hey, saint, so and so, if you do this for me, I promise you that I'm going to be doing this for you. So these are ways for you to contact, contract, 
uh, some of these spirits. It is very important, guys, that if you offer something to any of these um, spirits, that you comply and you commit to the end of your bargain. Because, think about this, pay attention, the same way they give you, they can also take. Now, there's something really interesting that Jason Miller touches in his book, and I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but I'm going to leave it here, okay, for you guys to analyze it. According to Jason Miller, if somebody that is cursing you is sending you some kind of like terror spirit or some kind of spirit to do harm on you, sometimes it happens that that one spirit would work for the highest bidding. Is that how you say it? So you can actually get to convince the spirit that has been sent towards you to do harm to you to you can't contract that spirit you can in other words you can buy that spirit okay now in order for you to do this um you have to have a lot of experience on how to communicate with spirits and what type of spirit so i think it's a little bit complicated but i leave it here some of you guys are very smart and again i suggest that this if this is a topic that you really like and you really are enjoying please make sure to get the book read it because jason miller is going to not only tell you a lot more in regards to all the things that i'm talking to you guys about he also has in his book some rituals for you to call upon some spirits now let's talk about artificial spirits this is a topic that i have also talked to you guys about before i have two videos in this channel maybe more than two but i know for a fact that i have two videos that i have done pretty recent, at least within a year. And one is witch talk discussing tulpas, egregores, and servitors. And another video is me telling you how to go about and create a servitor. Now, these are spirits that we create. We raise energy, okay? And we give this energy a name, a form, attributes depending on what they're going to do and we and i strongly suggest again many of you guys think about this different than me but based on my experience and this is what i strongly suggest if you are going to create a servitor an egregore a topa this spirit that you create with your mind has to have an expiration date do not let this spirit linger as it is even when they have tasks and they have specific instructions on what to do it is well known that these spirits are very very capable of taking a will of their own so if you are going to do one of this spirits please make sure that you have them on a very very tight leash okay i have some things that um i want to share with you guys so you need to have them in a really tight leash they need to know and have very clear in their mind what's their task you must give them a due date an expiration date all right that's very important and you should not let them lose don't assume just like many people think that when you stop thinking about them they're done <laughs> this is energy that you raise so don't assume for one second don't assume for one second that they're gonna just dissipate when you stop thinking about them it is not the case. There's actually a book that I'm reading right now. It's a very long book and it's a very entertaining book. Um, what is her name? Alexandra, I forgot her name. But there's this lady, this French lady that uh, actually happened to ha spend a long time with uh, the monks in Tibet. And she was again from France and she was a woman. So at the time that she went and spent some time with the monks in Tibet, uh, foreigners were not allowed in Tibet she was allowed she spent time with them and she practiced for a long long time until she created her own tolpa she created somebody very happy sort of like a happy buddha okay and this tolpa took a will of its own it turned very dark and very sinister and it took her guys about six months of really hard meditation and mental work to actually 
destroy this tulpa. So what I'm trying to tell you with this is to make sure that we actually are going to deal with this type of spirits. Make sure that you have a tight leash on them and you have a firm hand, firm hand with this spirit. Okay. Um, so what can you do with this spirit? So they're going to, you're going to send them to protect you. Okay, they're going to be your protectors in the case of servitors or uh, any of these beings that you create with your mind. Make sure you give them weapons. It could be shields. It could be whatever it is that pertains to your specific situation. Okay, so you're going to create these creatures. You're going to create these servitors and these um, spirits are going to be working for you. You give them the task and you arm them. All right, they're going to be your soldiers, so you have to arm them. Another thing that you can do not only with servitors, but also with the spirit guardians, like any type of spirits that you're using, you can charge amulets, you can charge uh, sigils, you can charge seals, you can charge things. You can even make bottles like a genie in a bottle. You can even make bottles and have that spirit in there. Now, don't assume for one second that just because you put this spirit in a bottle, for example, or in a box, you are locking the spirit again. It's well, no, the the energy of a spirit, and this is something that Jason Miller talks about in his book, and I think it's great the way he puts it. The energy of the spirit is going to be like a fire torch right so you get that fire torch and that fire with that fire of the torch you light your fire so you are not keeping the spirit against its will you're just getting some of that energy because they are like fire so those are the things that you can do with this spirits so you have to give them tasks you're going to ask them to help you out right you're going to charge different things with the energy of the spirits and once you are done and you think your curse is done they took care of what they took care make sure to either destroy or release back i don't want to say i don't want to use they use destroy because uh, people get really confused and they think we're killing stuff that's not what we're talking about uh but let's just release them and put them back into the ether right and if you're working with actually guardian spirits like loas or orishas or angels or saints demons gene whatever it is that you're choosing to use please make sure that if you uh promise them something you commit all right and you keep the end of the bargain all right it is really important that you know these things and that you learn about all these things before you start playing with these forces that are really magnificent forces that we have out there for our assistance the last thing that i'm going to tell you and uh, we're going to do one more video we are already done with the spirits that we're using pretty much uh, my next video is going to be talking to you about the two type of magics that we can use in regards to um, your curses but the last thing that i want to tell you before i finish this video is this always start with the simple things always start with simple magic all right and then get into your intermediate magic and if it's not working then you move up what i'm trying to tell you do not bring your biggest guns for a stupid battle all right don't use this the, the, the energy of these loas, these spirits, these angels, these saints for silly things. Don't. Your spells and everything you do when it comes to magic, it has to be very well thought out. You have to decide everything that you're going to do. You're going to sit down and you're going to prepare yourself. Do not work just purely on emotions do not be an impulsive person when it comes to magic and don't be trying to annihilate somebody just for stupid things all right and i'm telling you this because i do get a lot of emails requesting really hardcore magic for really really simple matters and mundane matters it is always awesome talking to you witches if you like these videos please i do need your love thumbs up subscribe to my channel and spread the love share with your friends you do not know who may be needing this okay email me layer of the witch at yahoo.com layer of the witch at yahoo.com until next time pretty soon Stay wicked. Bye.